Big story in American soccer the past few days. This news came down on Friday. Everybody's been reacting to it since then. MLS owners have voted not to use their first team squads in the 2024 edition of the U.S. Open Cup. Instead, they will field their reserve sides. The main reason given was fixture congestion, particularly given the advent of the League's Cup. We know Don Garber is not a big fan of the Open Cup. He's made that clear with his comments over the past year. You won the Open Cup with the Galaxy back in 2001. I'm sure you have thoughts on this situation. I definitely have thoughts on this situation. And it is so uh, uniquely but typically American soccer that it, it, it's there's a comfort level to it because I, I come to expect this type of stuff. But there's also a shaking of the head. Um, all right. So when it comes to the U.S. Open Cup, as you mentioned, I have a long history with the U.S. Open Cup. I have won it as a player. I have participated. Uh, I have watched it and followed it over the years. And for those that don't know, it is, um, you know, a century-old tournament. So for those that argue that the United States doesn't have history when it comes to soccer, that's not necessarily true. And here is a specific instance where there is incredible history on and off the field as to what this tournament is and what it has meant over the years. As you mentioned, in 2001, I won it with the uh, Los Angeles Galaxy. As a matter of fact, I brought the trophy into our studio today, Mossy. I know you're uh, over there in Florida, so you don't get to touch it and see it and feel it, but it is here in the studio with us today. And there's a story behind that, and then I'll get to the, this, <laughs> this interesting issue. Um, this is the 2001 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup trophy. It has resided in the lawless households over the years, in the different houses that I have lived, for now, you know, over 20 years. Because uh, this, and for those that are watching, you will see some pictures coming up. This is us winning it back then. There's the great Kobe Jones, and it goes on and on, Kevin Hartman and Goal, and uh, the late, great Ziggy Schmidt leading us. On the day of that final, there's Greg Vanny and Ezra Hendrickson, uh, Ezra Hendrickson um, holding up this trophy. On the day of that final, the actual trophy did not make it in on the plane to be awarded. And so they actually had to go out and buy a different trophy. So in all of the pictures, including the ones that, are, for those that are watching or they're seeing right now, you are seeing this trophy that was bought right before the final because the other one had not arrived. And this is what we passed around. This is the pictures that we took. After that game, I was left holding this trophy, at which point I got in my car, drove home, put it in my bedroom, and that's where it's been <laughs> for 20 years. It has had flowers in it at times. Uh, there are parties, some very, very famous MLS parties in, in the years past where a who's who of American soccer was there that have seen it and you know, either commented on or, or uh, scratched their head as to what that is. But all of this is to say is that the U.S. Open Cup is near and dear to me. Having said that, this is the U.S. Open Cup, all right? There's that, there's that meme out there, Mossy. I know you're a big uh, movie fan. That uh, Super Bad was a movie that came out years ago. So, so funny, but there's that meme out there where uh, the, the characters are saying, um, calm down, Greg, it's soccer, it's soccer. And so as this played out over the last couple of days, I kept going back to that meme where, look, what, that's actually, that, you know, that's something that soccer people would take personally, right? It's funny as hell, but it, because it's rooted in truth. Soccer is not king in the United States. And a lot of people just think, well, it's just soccer. To us, it's near and dear. And we are romantic and protective of it, okay? But the reality is that we are few relative to other sports and to other leagues. And so I, I was left thinking about this, <laughs> this, this meme. Because when you look at the Open Cup, um, there are devoted U.S. Open Cup fans, as I mentioned, passionate ones. Uh, you're looking and listening to one right now. But the reality is we are, we are few, and it's been amazing to see how people have glommed on to this and, you know, um, captured this and now have made it their own. I'm talking about the Open Cup relative to this decision by Major League Soccer 
not to participate in upcoming Open Cups. So a couple of things also, Monsi. Uh, X over there, we now call it X, what was Twitter, Twitter. I know my mom doesn't like that, but just for those that haven't kept up, X is just a sliver uh, of the voices out there. And while it can be incredibly loud, it can, be, uh, it can make you think that it is a, a focus group as opposed to an echo chamber over there. And a lot of people raising their voices. Um, as I mentioned, the devoted fans are few. Uh, when it comes to MLS, this decision, make, you know, make, you know, make no bones about it. This is a business decision. And MLS, as I've said time and time again, their responsibility is to Major League Soccer and to the business of Major League Soccer. It is not to soccer in general. All right. That is the responsibility of U.S. soccer. Also keep in mind, there's all sorts of layers to this, including Soccer United Marketing, which was once uh, a partner of U.S. soccer that, they, that U.S. soccer divested themselves of. And so hell hath no fury like a scorned Soccer United Marketing. Um, this also should be looked at from the other way, from USL uh, in participation, because this actually opens up, if MLS Division I teams are not participating, this opens up an opportunity for USL teams to have a easier pathway to CONCACAF Champions Cup because as it stands right now, the winner of the Lamar Hunt Open Cup gets an automatic bid into CONCACAF Champions uh, uh, Club. Uh, what is it called? We call it CONCACAF Champions. We used to be called CONCACAF Champions League. What is it now, Mossy? Con- CONCACAF Champions Cup, Cup right? Think. Yeah, CONCACAF Champions Cup. You get an automatic bid uh, into that. So that's that's going to be interesting how that all shapes up. And then the last part of it, and it's a general part, and I've said it before, U.S. soccer, you know, we eat our own. And the and while people are screaming and yelling about this, this is what's going to happen. This is end up, end up going to be just more litigation and more lawyers uh, and more of this BS that we see in our game too often. And maybe that's what MLS wants. And MLS, make no mistake again, is the big dog here. And they are, you know, they are showing their power by this move. And keep in mind that United States Soccer Federation, as pissed off as they might be about this, and evidently they were blindsided by this, they still need Major League Soccer and that power that is Major League Soccer going forward. But this also is a moment where, you know, the power dynamic is going to be tested. And JT Batson over there, the head of U.S. Soccer, uh, this is going to really demand some sort of action or accountability from United States soccer because of the way that MLS has, has done this, I guess, to this, uh, to this league. And keep in mind that, you know, the, um, you know, MLS, I'm sure thought about this. There's some smart people over there. They have that Boston consulting group that they always reference and talk about when it comes to the numbers out there. And so they will have, you know, looked at this as to how and why should we do this. They're going to say that it's about MLS Next Pro now participating in Open Cup and giving them the opportunity and giving them the experience. They're going to say it's about the amount of games that their players play, and I I get all that. But the reality is that if um, if this tournament was an MLS property, I think the uh, reaction to this, and I think the um, the decision would be very, very different. And we all know it's not an MLS property. So we'll ultimately see how this plays out. But I'll finish with this, Mossy. These soccer wars that we have and the fact that we continue to eat our own, if I'm MLS right now looking for big, bold things to do, and the announcements from the board of directors this past week were inconsequential on the surface, and let's be honest, not the big, bold things that people kind of want MLS to do leading up to 2026. Instead of having all these wars, let's consolidate. Let's have MLS look at USL as something to acquire. I would love nothing more than for Major League Soccer to buy USL, lock, stock, and barrel, and have it all come under the MLS tent, if you will. will. And you can have promotion relegation in it. You can have all of these different leagues. But the infighting and those soccer wars, 
go away to a certain extent. I know they don't completely go away, but I would love for that to happen going forward uh, and going forward into 2026. That's the big, bold types of things that I want to see people doing leading up to 2026. I don't want them fighting. I don't want them in court. I don't want them saber rattling. I don't want them strutting around and wielding this type of power that hurts others, that ultimately can hurt the game. And we've wasted too much time and too many resources doing something like that. Mossy, thoughts? So you did have thoughts on this. I did. I, I, it, it, it riled me up this weekend because I, I am, I'm a romantic, Mossy. I know, I, and I can look at it from a romantic side. But as you know, and for anybody that's listened or watched me over the years, you know I'm also uh, a staunch capitalist, and I believe in businesses doing what is right for their business. And again, the United States Soccer Federation's responsibility is to soccer. MLS's responsibility is to MLS. It doesn't mean that they don't do things to help soccer. But participating in the U.S. Open Cup cannot just be out of a sense of responsibility it cannot just be an altruistic charitable type of venture for MLS or for anybody out there. And let's be honest. All right. It doesn't make money and not enough people care about it. And that was me poking fun at how long you spoke for. And then I you proceeded know. to launch into another length. You ran. I'm riled up. This. Uh, I'm riled now, up. You've, uh, you've coined the term taking one for the team. Uh, nobody's going to claim that the Premier League doesn't care about money, but their clubs play in the FA Cup. Barcelona and Real Madrid play in the Copa del Rey. Bayern Munich plays in the German Cup, even though that means sometimes facing lower division teams and tiny stadiums and terrible fields. Does it bother you that MLS isn't willing to, quote unquote, take one for the team? Here? Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's I don't think it's MLS's responsibility necessarily to take one for the team. Now, if they are killing kill. If in doing so, they are killing the golden goose, and that let's say that golden goose is soccer in America. And we all know that there's incredible potential and existing power and value in soccer in America. If in this decision, they are either killing or maiming the golden goose, then that's a problem for them. And so again, uh, you know, if if participating in it in terms of the games that they play, the competition that they play, the time that is spent, and the lack of value in return is a problem, then I don't know why they would want to continue to do it. Other than the contractual obligation that they have in terms of the, um, the pro standards that are required when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to Division One, Division Two, all of those different things, I should probably read those. Uh, read those out, Mossy. Thoughts before I, while I pull this up here. Uh, shouldn't individual clubs be able to decide for themselves? What if there's an MLS team whose season unfolds in such a way where they think the Open Cup is our best shot at a trophy and a CCL berth, and we do want to quote unquote go for it? Are they not going to be allowed to do so? Isn't it odd to have an overall decree like this? No, it's not odd in a single entity in a league that has prided itself on doing things collectively since the start. So I don't, I think they wanted to have a united front. And listen, there are all sorts of levels to this and the, uh, you know, the partnerships and the longstanding history and the relationships between U.S. soccer and MLS that still exist. I mean, hell, I was just down in Atlanta. Uh, you know, Arthur Blank, he gave $50 million for the uh, new U.S. soccer training center down there in Atlanta. So there's all sorts of layers and sensibilities when it comes to thinking of something like this. But this is where it's going to get interesting because for those that don't know, and I want to get too into the weeds for those out there, but you know what? This is, this is a podcast about soccer. And so you're here kind of to get a little bit into the weeds. So the USSF, United States Soccer Federation, professional league standards. They are requirements um, that are put on any team that wants a division sanction. You get the division sanction from the federation, in this case, the United States Soccer Federation. It could be Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, And there's a list of requirements or in order to qualify for that sanctioning for outdoor pro soccer leagues. And this is the clause that's going to be argued about re-MLS the Division One teams, because we'll get to the Division Three teams, not participating in the U.S. Open Cup. And it says, 
U.S.-based teams must participate in all representative U.S. soccer and CONCACAF competitions for which they are eligible. Well, this is a U.S. soccer competition, and they are certainly eligible given the past. Now, MLS has also said that they are going to participate in the form of their MLS Next Pro teams. Now, that is a sanctioned third division that is basically the Reserve League. And I think this is also an admission by MLS that the decoupling from USL a number of years back has not gone the way that they want in terms of creating the environments for these players to develop. So they look at the value to them, MLS, the value to them of US Open Cup is for their reserve league, basically, to play in it. Now, it'll be interesting to see if this continues on. And I've talked to a bunch of people over the last couple of days. They believe U.S. Open Cup is going to continue on with or without Major League Soccer in terms of Division I. And if, it's, if that's the case, as I said, USL has a much clearer and easier path to being U.S. Open Cup chance, which gives them CCC uh, qualification. But you have MLS Next Pro being involved too. And God forbid they were to lose to an MLS Next Pro team along the way. Mossy, anything else on this? Well, old habits die hard. I think I said CCL uh, yeah. a moment ago. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess it's now CCC. Again. Yeah, I mean, last last thing on this. Um, so uh, you would agree with the basic premise that at times what's best for MLS's bottom line and what's best for the overall growth of soccer in this country might not be aligned. And this is arguably one of those instances. Yeah, absolutely. But that that exists in all businesses. And, you know, that's why, I, again, I go back to this acquisition type of idea or dream that I have where everything is under the same umbrella and therefore we can, we can go faster and further than we have ever before because, look, I, I love competition, but I just look at MLS, again, if MLS is the big dog, then like any business, you would be looking at others to bring into your organization to make you stronger. Again, with 2026 uh, coming barreling down the pike here in a, few, in a few years. And who knows? Maybe this is a situation like Save the Crew, Mossy. Maybe this is the light of the fuse that the Open Cup needed. Maybe it's not by design or who knows? Gosh, all, all you, you know, conspiracy theorists out there, who knows? Because we know what happened last time MLS pulled something, I guess, like this. And people went crazy. So much so that they ultimately saved the crew. And now we've just seen what the crew has happened. Who knows? Maybe this is what people needed to wake up to what the potential is for U.S. Open Cup and how much they either like it or didn't know they liked it or now find out what it is, and therefore like it going forward. And there is this collective communal type of reaction that makes U.S. Open Cup relevant. Because let's be honest, Mossy, it has not been relevant. As, as, as much as it may live in my heart and so many other people's hearts, we can look at it from romantic, uh, no, uh, well, you know, with romantic eyeglasses on. The reality is if the U.S. Open Cup went away, there's not enough people that care about it that would make it matter. But who knows? Maybe this is the catalyst that changes all of those things. Anything else on this, Moss? It's going to continue to be a story. We'll continue to see it play out. And like I said, there's all sorts of palace intrigue and dynamics and uh, you know, all, you know, all those different things that happen when you have some heavy hitters and you know, what this is or what this is possibly going to be going forward. But there's a lot of people out there um, that look at this and say, this was, this was not right by Major League Soccer. Well, I say there's a lot of people. There are people out there, certainly, that are looking at this and saying, this was not right by U.S. soccer. And there is a case to be made, Mossy. I can, I can put myself in other people's shoes and I can put myself in that side and make that case. But as it stands right now, and I, and I know, listen, I know you tune into the State of the Union podcast to kind of get a, a top-level type of assessment of what's going on. But, you know, this is part of, like I said, our history and of our tradition. And I get it. History and tradition changes and moves on and evolves and adapts and adjusts going forward. But this is still part of U.S. soccer. 
And so it's, I think it's fun talking about it and thinking about it because it brings up so many other things um, rele- relevant to the American soccer fan and what he or she is and how they think of themselves in the greater world of soccer out there and how they think of their past and how they think about going forward and all of these different things. So I thought it was, uh, I thought it was interesting. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.